sometimes a person is so high profile yet so respected that when and if they are killed it beggars belief when a former state senator respected in her community was murdered it was a real who done it but when the truth was uncovered it became a why done it as her somewhat messy personal life was unpicked it seemed that there were definitely people with motives to want the woman dead but as is so often the case in modern criminal investigation the answers would come in the form of surveillance video this is the case of the murder of Linda Collins Smith and this is murder of crows Okay, let's talk about Pocahontas. No, 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 not that one. I am of course referring to the city in Arkansas because this was the birthplace of Linda Collins in 1961. She was educated in Williford, Arkansas her family was very poor living 10 miles down a gravel road in a home that didn't have running water until her teenage years she was very bright and despite her inauspicious beginnings she became a successful businesswoman and she married Philip Smith in 1995 and he went on to become a circuit court judge she was a real estate agent but in around 2001 she acquired the Days Inn Hotel in Pocahontas which she ran until it was sold in 2016 our interest in Linda is later in the 21st century when she began a political career where she was broadly liked but was not without her controversial moment. Her first significant steps in political office were in the Arkansas House of Representatives where she served as a member from 2011 to 2013 representing District 80 yep that means nothing to me either though elected as a democrat she switched parties in august of 2011 eight months after taking office as you do apart from her overarching no republican leanings 
Her other political affiliations included being a lifetime member of the National Rifle Association, otherwise known as the NRA, and she was a member of the following organisations in addition. Gun Owners of America, Arkansas Hospitality for Association, National Federation of Independent Business, Arkansas Chamber of Commerce, Randolph County, Arkansas Chamber of Commerce, the Rotary Club, the Arkansas Lodging Association, Lower Mississippi Delta Development Council, and the Arkansas Federation of Republican Women. So, taking that as a whole, basically it was guns for lady shopkeepers, it would appear. Arguably, of these leanings, the most contentious would be her pro-gun stance. But given the massive support the NRA had in the US, this was really quite unremarkable within political circles. Linda chose to run for the Arkansas Senate in the 19th District, where the incumbent Democratic Senator David Wyatt defeated her in the 2012 general election. But on November the 4th, 2014, she beat Democrat James McLean for the seat, which began her career within the Arkansas Senate. Now the first couple of years of her service within the Senate were pretty unremarkable. Perhaps uh, with Linda taking this time to get used to how things were done within the State Senate, and partially due to the fact that her personal life at this point in time was going to shit. And this was mainly due to the questionable actions of her husband, Judge Philip Smith. In 2017, Linda filed for divorce from Smith, with whom she shared two children and three grandchildren. And as part of the divorce proceedings, he was exposed in a scandal for, now let me just get this right now, improper use of court equipment for extrajudicial purposes. Cutting through the jargon here, he was using his work computer for other purposes. It never explicitly specifies what he did use it for, but I'm guessing it was probably a bit more serious than just going on eBay. But I'll leave you ponder the possibilities for yourselves. Dirty, dirty. He received an official reprimand as, and was banned from further serving for the judiciary in 2019 and you can see the information relating to these proceedings on the screen now.
Given that his wife was a serving state senator, Linda was somewhat unsurprisingly keen to distance herself from Smith. But in 2017, controversy was not limited just to her personal life. She was equally making waves professionally in 2017. First, she attempted to introduce the Arkansas Physical Privacy and Safety Act, which would prohibit people, including transgender people, from entering government restrooms or changing facilities designated for the opposite sex as it pertains to a person's immutable biological sex as objectively determined by anatomy and genetics existing at the time of birth. With her saying that this bill would set a baseline for privacy across the state, and shield public schools from lawsuits by organisations seeking to impose their anti-privacy agenda on our children. Thankfully, the Act failed to pass. Now, not content with this, the same year, she tried to introduce the True Campus Carry Act, also in 2017. And this would have allowed concealed carry license holders to walk armed on campus with no additional training. She really was coming across as a cave woman in a business suit professionally at this time. And perhaps unsurprisingly, she was defeated for her Senate seat by Democrat James Sturch in 2018. She only lost by around 500 votes. But lose she did. Through her political career, as well as being a well known figure in business circles, Linda was well known in Pocahontas and further afield across Arkansas. While her political stances were very divisive, she was broadly liked as a person, with the obvious exception being her ex-husband Philip Smith, as the legal wranglings from their divorce were continuing to prove acrimonious and acerbic. Linda was being helped in personal matters by her friend Rebecca O'Donnell. Now Rebecca had first appeared in Linda's world through involvement in her political campaigns. But over time this developed into a deep personal friendship that saw Rebecca become best friends with the now former senator. In early June of 2019, Linda had just returned to her home in Arkansas after a visit to Washington DC. But a week after her return, Linda's family started to get worried 
as she had been unresponsive to any text and had been strangely quiet on social media. Linda's father and Linda's son Butch Smith visited the home hoping to get in contact with her. But ultimately they found her body covered by a tarp in the driveway. We've been trying to find her for the last few days, almost a week, and we've not heard from her. Linda Collins Smith's adult son is the person who first alerted authorities back in June of 2019. So we came to do a wellness check at her house. I think I found a body. The home of the former state senator quickly turned into a crime scene after finding her stabbed to death. A report shows investigators found blood in the kitchen and Clorox. Investigators note the bottle had what appeared to be suspected smeared blood on the top of the nozzle. There was blood in the kitchen and the security cameras that, were, that had been installed throughout her home had been removed. It was a vicious assault but the fact that the cameras had been removed suggested that the killer must have had knowledge of where the cameras were located. Given her messy personal life, she had started a new relationship, but the issues with her ex-husband Philip Smith remained very public and very, very bitter. And while the police did look into the boyfriend, their focus was very much on Philip Smith, given there was no love lost between the former spouses, with Smith blaming Linda for him losing his career as a judge, since it was their divorce proceedings that exposed his less than savoury behaviour involving his work property. Dirty, dirty boy. Of course, key to the collection of evidence was trying to access the information from the security cameras as if they had been functional up until their removal they could provide critical information about who had actually taken the cameras down. But what they found was far more revealing. Troopers were able to retrieve Colin Smith's home security footage, which captures a woman screaming, and then this. O'Donnell putting a large knife in a purse. Detectives say she took Colin Smith's cameras, but forgot to delete some of the video. Hours after the murder, this nighttime video outside Colin Smith's home captures someone hiding under a white sheet, going back inside. Days later, and en route to the former state senator's visitation, O'Donnell is taken into custody. You're under the risk of the murder, Linda. You understand that? We got you. We got you. We got video of you. You didn't erase them all. We got you. One of the cameras that had been taken down continued to record seemingly from within a bag. And it showed none other than Rebecca O'Donnell wielding a bloody knife, clearly unaware that the camera was still recording. The shocks didn't end there. O'Donnell and her boyfriend Tim Loggins were deeply embedded in Linda's affairs, including her financial dealings. 
and it would be fair to say that some aspects seemed somewhat irregular. Loggins had held power of attorney for Linda Collins for at least a period of time in 2018. This was verified in an emergency motion filed uh, in October of 2018 by Linda Collins' ex-husband Philip Smith. The motion, which was filed after the divorce decree, requested that Loggins stop using joint bank accounts uh, that named both Collins and Smith as account holders without Smith's express authorization. On October the 1st, 2018, Loggins deposited $52,401.38 into the former couple's joint account. He then wrote a check out of the, of the exact same amount uh, to create a cashier's check for Linda Collins Smith. So basically he was depositing the money and then removing it again just as a mechanism to allow the money to go through the system. On October the 12th, 2018, Loggins attempted to cash the 2016 federal tax refund checks, totaling $428,522.84. Made out to Collins and Smith jointly. Now, Smith, a, for, a former judge, as we know, called the bank and requested that the deposit be refused without his signature. And ultimately, Smith won the bid to have. Loggins stop messing with his money basically so it's quite clear that there was some jiggery pokery in terms of financial dealings on Linda Collins Smith's side of things presumably at the hands of Tim Loggins and Rebecca O'Donnell Robert Dittrich, the special prosecutor assigned to the case, said in a filing that the aggravating circumstances that justified the capital murder charge included the belief that the murder was committed for the purpose of avoiding or preventing arrest and for pecuniary gain. But Rebecca O'Donnell was not sitting idly by as she sat in prison awaiting trial or no, 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 no. Authorities alleged that she tried to recruit several female inmates at the Jackson County Jail to carry out hits on a judge and a prosecutor that had at one time been assigned to the murder case. New charges were filed today in Jackson County alleging that while locked up in county jail, charged with murdering former state senator Linda Collins, Rebecca O'Donnell attempted to hire someone to kill Collins' ex-husband, Phil Smith. According to a probable cause affidavit filed today, O'Donnell approached four different inmates locked up with her about murdering Smith and making the death look like a suicide. She allegedly wrote up a fake suicide note for the job. 
According to the affidavit, she also spoke with inmates about murdering Smith's wife, a prosecutor, and a judge. She also allegedly looked into hiring inmates to travel to the Randolph County Jail, where her 2005 Honda Civic is being held, and to, quote, blow it up to destroy any evidence that may be in the vehicle, end quote, according to the affidavit. According to one inmate approached by O'Donnell, quote, the wife of Phil Smith, Mary Smith, was also a target. Another inmate said that O'Donnell approached her about killing Randolph County Judge Harold Irwin and Henry Boyce, then the prosecutor on the Linda Collins murder case, before he recused himself last month, in addition to Phil Smith, according to the affidavit. There must have been evidence for it because she was charged with two counts each of solicitation to commit capital murder and tampering with physical evidence. Well played, Missy, well played. According to the probable cause affidavit, O'Donnell's cellmate at the jail told Arkansas State Police officials that O'Donnell had asked her and three other women for her help in arranging the killings. Two of the women told police that they were asked for help in killing Henry Boyce the prosecutor who was assigned to O'Donnell's murder case. Randolph County Judge Harold Irwin was also the target of one of O'Donnell's plots. Oh well, in for a penny, in for a pound. Given that she was in the very deepest of deep shit, she obviously jumped at the offer of a plea deal. I feel like the sentence today was fair. Silence today from Rebecca O'Donnell as she walked out of the Randolph County Courthouse, a convicted woman headed to prison. It was a case headed for trial, but today that all changed from pleading not guilty to changing that plea for murdering Linda Collins. We had several crews in the courtroom today. Let's start with Miranda Reynolds. Uh, Miranda, I understand you spoke to O'Donnell's defense attorney. What was that conversation like? That's right. That's right, Amanda. I did get to speak to one of her counselors, Lee Short, who expressed sympathy towards Rebecca, saying it was overall a tough day. But let me first walk you through what happened today. When Rebecca and her two defense counselors entered court, they laid no papers on the tables and waited for court to begin. Then came the guilty pleas, two of them. First, capital murder in the death of Linda Collins. Second, no contest to two counts of solicitation to commit capital murder in the Jackson County case. Defense attorney Lee Short, who represented Rebecca, explains how the end of this over year long case affected him. Um, it's it's uh, tough because, you know, you feel bad for Miss Smith's family. You also uh, have to recognize that someone's going to go to prison for almost the rest of her life, if not the rest of her life. It's a tough day. But the good thing is it brought closure to both families, um, and that was the most important thing today. This is what Rebecca now faces for the crimes she committed. 40 years on the first charge of murder, three years on the charge of abuse of corpse, seven years to each Jackson County charges. Now the Jackson County charges will run concurrently, meaning the same time, but will be added to the Randolph County sentence of 43 years, bringing Rebecca to a total of 50 years to serve behind bars. Region 8 News will be live again at 6 o'clock tonight where you will get to hear from Randolph County Sheriff Kevin Bell on his take on the case. For now, reporting live in Pocahontas, Miranda Reynolds for Region 8 News. None of the punishments allowed per Arkansas state law will come close to what I feel right now and as a right and equal punishment for her. 
Now you just heard from Linda Collins, son, Butch Smith, emotionally reacting to that plea deal, which convicted murderer Rebecca O'Donnell. Smith was the one who found his own mother dead at her home last June. We'll take a look back at that tragic night a little bit later on. But first, while the case is closed, healing is really just beginning for former state Senator Linda Collins' family. Logan Whaley is live in Pocahontas with the thoughts uh, from Collins' children that are now left behind. Well, Amanda, it was an emotional day here at the Randolph County Courthouse. Linda Collins' children spoke to us about an hour after the hearing ended, recalling the moment Linda was found dead, and you could tell the emotional toll that this has taken on them. I will never not be able to see that picture burn in my brain. Linda's family fighting back tears after the court hearing Thursday. That was Butch, Linda's oldest child. He was the one who found her dead. She was lying face down, wrapped in one of my old comforters, and shoved underneath the tarp in her driveway. He says the last memory he has of her was making that 911 call with the sight and smell of his mom's body in his mind. Butch says his mother's death was, quote, an awful deed carried out of hate, jealousy, and greed. And we realize that no matter what punishment Rebecca O'Donnell receives, it will never be enough. Both Butch and his sister Tate Williams feel that none of the punishments for Rebecca O'Donnell will come close to what they feel is right. It will never bring my grandpa's daughter back, or our mother back, or our children's grandmother back. No amount of punishment will ever fill that void that Rebecca O'Donnell made in our lives the day she killed our mother. Williams believes that if her mother was here today, she'd quote the Bible, saying that peace can be found in God. Tate quoted Romans 12, 19 and said O'Donnell will answer for her sins. It is guaranteed by God that justice will be fully served swiftly and justly when we are called to answer for our sins before him. And now the family continues to focus on healing. Anybody who's ever interacted with her and they all love to share the stories that they've had and that's that's the best thing. The best form of healing is just hearing these amazing stories and, and, and just the, the great amount of love and, and happiness that she brought to everybody that she touched. Now the family says while they don't see the plea deal as ideal, it does guarantee prison time and the Collins family hopes O'Donnell never makes parole. Live in Randolph County, Logan Whaley, Region 8 News. And this saw her plead guilty to first degree murder, abuse of a corpse, and to no contest pleas to solicit murder in Jackson County. In exchange, the death penalty was taken off the table, and instead, O'Donnell was sentenced to 50 years in prison. So there we have another murder catalyzed by greed, along with wanting to hide the financial shenanigans that had gone before. Clearly O'Donnell had no depth of feeling for the best friend that she previously stated that she was dedicated to. Whatever your view on Linda Collins Smith's political stances and or business practices, no one deserves to be murdered. Least of all, someone who was being used as a cash cow for a best friend who saw only dollar signs and not a loyal friendship. Rebecca O'Donnell's actions in trying to solicit the murders of key figures in the case as she was awaiting trial, spoke volumes in terms of her as a person and what her personal values were. She is exactly where she belongs. 
Linda Collins Smith may have been a divisive figure politically, but she was also a mother and a grandmother who was settling back into daily life in Pocahontas, helped by the best friend that ultimately killed her for financial gain. It was a brutal killing that no one deserves. And in this case, Linda was a true innocent who simply trusted the wrong person. This video is of course dedicated to her and I send love and condolences to her friends and family. Thank you for watching another episode of Murder of Crows. I'm Steve. This soppy sod is Samson. And we will see you when we see you. Mm -hmm.